Batman Secret Files issue 3 sees young Batman looking out for Carl Fogel, a light in Gotham's dark who is buying up land in the city and declaring them historical landmarks, meaning the hundreds of low income families in those areas get to keep their homes while developers have to look elsewhere. Batman has heard of an attempt on his life by someone who has never failed before, Cheshire, whom he finds on a rooftop. Batman says he didn't come to fight the assassin, telling her that there is a better way to go through life. Cheshire is caught off guard by Batman want to help her but she attacks him saying this is who she is and what she does. Batman grabs her saying it doesn't have to be this way and she has a choice. Headbutting Batman, the villain breaks free from his grasp trying to slice Batman with her claws as the hero tells her Fogel is a good man and he's helping hundreds just like Cheshire could if she let Batman help her since her knowledge and strength could do so much good for the world. Cheshire doesn't care for Batman's advice calling him arrogant for believing that he of all people has the moral high ground dictate how others behave. Batman knows he's been where the villain has been, knowing how seductive the darkness is, but he has never given in to any of it. Throwing the villain onto the ground, Batman says he's aware of the woman's reputation as a killer without remorse, but he knows that's not true and she has a chance right here right now to prove those people calling her a killer wrong. Sitting with her, he tells her it's not too late to let this define her. Cheshire laughs, finding Batman believing all of this funny, but it's too late saying that while she wanted to test her skill against his, she's disappointed. Batman soon realizes that Fogel has been killed already as he begins to feel the effects of Cheshire's poison, which he was infected by when he grabbed her gauntlets. Cheshire says that he was poisoned with a tetrodotoxin, one of the deadliest venoms on earth. Batman falls down choking as the villain says that she won't kill him this time, since that would be anticlimactic, and if he can manage to keep his lungs moving for the next 24 hours, he should recover and remember this next time he decides to know what's best for someone. Cheshire leaves, saying that this is what it looks like when she reaches her full potential. Batman quickly injects himself with an antidote to keep him alive as he topples off the building, landing on the Batmobile and telling it to head to safe haven. Later, Batman awakens in the care of Leslie Tompkins, who wants to know who almost killed the hero. Batman says that it was a young assassin whom he thought he could convince to turn from her dark ways, but he underestimated her and made a mistake. Leslie knows that Batman likes to think that he is jaded but she sees right through it and knows not everyone wants to be good and some people prefer to be in the dark since that's where they thrive and he needs to accept that he just can't save everyone. Batman knows that if she believed that he wouldn't be there. Leslie knows he almost wasn't telling him to rest. Batman knows who Cheshire is now however so he won't be making the same mistake again. Years later, Batman saves a girl from a burning building as someone fires an arrow into his back, knowing that all of the years of dodging death traps and the thing that finally caught up to him was not listening to Green Arrow. Sometime before, Batman teams with Green Arrow, who doesn't understand why Bruce wears a cape, thinking that it would drag him down a lot. Batman says he compensates that with a little thing called strength training, saying he likes the cape, but Oliver thinks that he would be faster without it, especially at Bruce's age. Batman says it doesn't do anything really useful like a box glove arrow or a bucket of sparklers, but Oliver knows that one day Batman will be glad to have that stuff on him. Getting to the task at hand, Oliver fills Batman in on Malcolm Merlin moving into Gotham to kill Batman, yet he has not made his move. Batman says that he's been in Gotham for at least two weeks and done nothing, so he asks Oliver thanks to his previous relationship with the man. Oliver knows Merlin sees himself as a hunter, so if Batman hasn't seen him, it's because Malcolm is stalking him, learning his patterns so when he's ready, he will strike at the right time. Soon they spot the Gotham Children's Museum on fire, but Oliver knows that this is definitely something Merlin would have set up for them. Batman knows it's a trap but goes in anyway, finding a little girl trapped inside. Taking his cape off, Batman moves in to wrap up the little girl, but is shot in the back by an arrow. The fire seals the entrance of the building as another arrow hits Batman, forcing him to move further into the burning building. Doing so causes the hero to activate another trap, which blows him off his feet. Yet another arrow hits him in the back but Batman doesn't give up since if he does, the little girl dies. As he grapples up to the roof, Merlin reveals himself, telling Batman that he heard all about him. From the shadows, Batman says that he knows Merlin is a hunter, hence why the arrows pierced his lungs and not his heart. He wants the chase to continue. However, Batman knows real hunters shoot to kill, not maim, as he grabs Merlin from behind, snapping his bow in half and kicking him down. Green Arrow arrives, using a shock arrow to knock Merlin out. Oliver 
Oliver is shocked to find Batman was put through the mill, knowing he needs a doctor now, but Batman says that someone is on the way for him, wondering what took Oliver so long. Green Arrow says they had to blow his way into the building, reminding Batman that he told him not to take the bait. Batman knows he didn't give him a choice, but Oliver says that he was about to charge in as well, but Batman beat him to it, despite the cape, which Batman says he likes. In Elbow's fall, a woman flips through her phone when suddenly the ringtone goes off, scaring her half to death. Muting the phone, she continues to swipe through it in silence, soon joined by her cat. A noise is heard and suddenly a set of jaws appear on the screen, letting out a strange noise and scaring the woman and the cat. The noise, however, comes from Mr. Teeth, who is snuck into the woman's home intending on murdering her. The woman escapes the serial killer upstairs where Batman suddenly appears, smashing the villain in the face face and kicking him down the stairs. Batman battles the villain after introducing himself to him, smashing him in the face and knocking out all of his teeth, finally defeating him. In Gotham, Gunsmith talks to the gathered cops outside, saying that the weapon amnesty program Gotham had to hand in all of their firearms was a waste of firepower, which is why he took all of the collected guns. Batman meanwhile learns Gunsmith has rigged all of the windows with infrared tripwires, which trigger automatic rifles of his own design. He wonders if he has hostages, and Gunsmith says of course he has hostages, since he wanted to meet the Batman, who comes through the front door, immediately set upon by the auto guns. Gunsmith knows that superheroes are like apple pie and bourbon whiskey, something that the US does the best, and Batman is the very best. Batman calls out for Douglas, knowing everything about the ex-contract soldier and his history and how he can turn anything into a gun. Gunsmith says that everything has a trigger, he's just good at learning how to pull it. Batman calls him weak for using guns, but Gunsmith says that guns are the great equalizer, and the firearm is opportunity and America incarnate, and he's trying to keep their democracy alive. Gunsmith Gunsmith doesn't think Batman understands, sending out one of the hostages to point a gun at Batman. The boy says that Gunsmith has his brother, and if he doesn't kill Batman, Gunsmith will kill his brother. Batman tries to stop the boy, but the boy shoots Batman in the shoulder as the hero manages to take the gun away from him, learning he took the boy's brother to the roof. As Batman races to the roof, Gunsmith knows that Batman has been shot many times, knowing after the last bullet scraped his shoulder, Batman is very, very angry. Batman makes it to the roof, but Gunsmith throws the boy from it causing the hero to dive after him, letting the villain go. Gunsmith knows he wasn't going to shoot him since he's Batman and he's the best of America, and besides, he can make a gun out of anything, and now he knows Batman's trigger. Down on the street, Batman is confronted by the boy's brother, who again points a gun at him, knowing that since he shot Batman, the hero is going to come after him, since that's how it goes. Batman says the gun he has in his hand grants wishes, the wish to interrupt things, things like the cranium bone, blood vessels, and synapses. Batman tells him it's a wish that everyone thinks that they can make every now and then when they feel rage or panic or fear, but after that they feel regret and since the wish is granted so quickly, they cannot be undone. Taking the gun and unloading it, Batman says it's too much to ask the boy to wield that and his anger is not for him, it's for the people who would burden children with guns. Gunsmith meanwhile knows Batman isn't afraid of guns, but his trigger is that Batman is afraid of what America is now. In the present, Batman fights Deathstroke, who tells the hero this is all a distraction, but Batman doesn't care, telling the villain to shut up and fight. Slade slashes Batman on the face with his knife, but Batman continues to beat him down, asking why he came back to Gotham. Slade says he wanted to see a great man right before he lost everything, and then he wanted to beat the hell out of that man for letting it happen. A month prior, Slade is met by Joker and Punchline, telling them he won't do whatever the villain wants him to do. Joker knows he's playing hard to get, but Punchline thinks that he'll soon be playing with his intestines if he doesn't get with the program. Slade threatens to kill Punchline just to make his point, saying that he doesn't work for the Joker's kind of crazy. Joker doesn't think that the dictator Slade works for are any better than him, but Slade knows that they are predictable, and Joker is highly likely to pay him in Monopoly money. Slade punches through his punching bag, saying that he knows he wants to hear Joker's pitch, and if he doesn't, the clown will kidnap someone he thinks Slade cares for and get him to work for him then. 
so Slade just wants him to get on with the pitch. Slade tells Punchline to leave them before telling Slade a really good joke about the billionaire who runs around dressed like a bat. Slade is actually surprised and Joker says that he could have known it a long time ago if he wanted, but that wasn't the game he was playing, but things have now changed. He knows people think he's too crazy to know who Batman is and that's useful to him. Joker begins to lay out his plan, saying that he's about to make a big play with some big players and Batman can't know what he's up to until it's too late. Slade wants to know how he will pull it off and Joker says he won't. Slade will pull it off and the key is to keep Batman juggling 12 plates and a burning chainsaw before he tries to pick his pocket. Slade soon realizes what Joker is after, the Wayne fortune. Joker confirms the plan but it's not so easy since the Wayne Trust has five beneficiaries, not counting Bruce and Alfred who is dead. Slade knows that one of them is Dick Grayson but the Joker knows Dick isn't himself these days so he won't be missing his fortune. He plans on taking the fortune, the company and even Batman's toys and use them to wage war against the Dark Knight like never before. Slade wants proof he's serious about all of this and needs plans before he helps but the Joker knows that Slade is in. In the present Batman continues his fight with Slade, telling him he's going to make the assassin tell him who sent him. Slade knows that Batman won't and he'll just beat him until he's unconscious but the hero suddenly stabs Slade in his one good eye. Batman tells him that Catwoman has sights on Slade's man at the gala and this will all be over before sunrise. But Slade thinks that it's a funny joke that Batman thinks it's over, but he has no idea. However, soon he will realize the punchline. Batman Secret Files issue 3 was a great collection of stories that all in one way or another tied into the upcoming Joker War, showcasing Batman's first tussles with these assassins that he's been fighting in James Tynan's book, while also providing a great bit of detail to the Joker War and what Joker's plan exactly entails. I enjoy the different takes on Batman at different parts of his career and how he learned valuable lessons that define who he is now as well as the rather topical gunsmith storyline which perfectly encapsulated Batman's hatred for guns but more specifically the people who force people to turn to them. I thought that was a really cool spin on the idea and I really enjoyed it. I thought all these stories were great in their own little ways and great at building up this whole Joker War that's coming out. I'm going to give this issue a 9 out of 10. To a 9.